Adventure Ahead. The National Broadcasting Company presents another in the series of famous stories for the young of all ages. Adventure Ahead. This week, The Biscuit Eater by James Street. A story of hunting dogs and the men and boys who raised them. The story of a scrawny little water-eyed pup that folks down south wouldn't have called a biscuit eater. Adventure Ahead. Seven new arrivals came to Harvey McNeil's place down in the piney wood country of Mississippi. And two young men were soon on hand to welcome the furry little strangers. Well, hello, boys. Morning, Papa. Howdy, Mr. McNeil. That's Kyla Ernie, ain't you, boys? We come to see Bonnie Blue's new puppy. Oh? That's right, Mr. McNeil. We can see him, can't we? I reckon so. If you're careful of him, come on in the shed. All right. There they are, boys. Golly. All seven of them. Bonnie Blue. Look at them little old puffs. Golly, they show as little. Ain't hardly got their eyes open, Mr. McNeil. No. Could I hold one of them, Papa? Could I? Uh, sure, Lonnie. Handle them easy. Well, Bonnie's got her eye on you. You hurt one of them, and she'll jump you like a blue jay jumps a June bug. I'll be careful. Hiya, puppy dog. How you doing, little old puppy dog? That they's going to make first rate bird dogs. Yes, sirree, bobtail. They ought to make good hunting dogs. Bunny Blue was a grand champion in a day. Almost as good as our Silver Bell. Mr. Ames, you pointer? Uh-huh. That Mr. Ames show owns a lot of super fine bird dogs. Yeah, well, he's a sportsman, Tex. He likes dogs, particularly champions. That's why I like to work for him. Bet these dogs will be champions, Mr. McNeil. Gee, Minetti, they'll take the birds easy. Well, it's more than just that, Tex. They'll have to be trained and looked after for a long time. Maybe a year before they can enter the field trials. To take care of their eyes and ears, give them shots so they're healthy, right kinds of food. Golly, they must be a powerful lot of trouble. No, they're no trouble at all when you really love dogs. And you get a reward for your work, too, when they're real champions someday. Well, I'll just put you back with your mama, little old puppy dog, because you're going to be a champion someday. There. Mr. McNeil... How long do you expect it'll be till these little old pups wins a ribbon at them field trials? <laughs> oh, they won't all be champions. Huh? What do you mean, Papa? Well, boys, there's a difference between those seven pups. They yes, Look all the same to me. What makes them different? The bloodline. Huh? Well, uh, most every litter of puppies has a doubtful strain. Bad streak from their pappy or grandpappy who wasn't so good. That bad strain in the bloodline shows up in one or two pups of every litter. Every litter? Uh-huh. Now, you take these seven little pups. Their pappy was a fair to middling bird dog. Till he started killing Farmer Eben's sheep. Yes, I know. What happened to him? I had to shoot him, Tex. That's the code of the piney woods. If a dog kills sheep or chickens, he has to die. Mm. That bad streak or strain most always shows up in the litter. It always comes out. But, but how can you tell? Oh, it's not hard, Lonnie. You mean one of these little old puppies is a... Is a bad one on account of his pappy? Yeah. Well, well, which one? Well, this little scrawny one. Here on the end. Up you go, boy. <laughs> See the size of him, boys? Uh-huh. He's showing a little pup. Yeah, he's the run. Scrawny spots all over him like freckles. <laughs> stringy tail. Never make a champion. In other words, this dog's just a, a biscuit eater. A biscuit eater? Means that that's all he's good for is to fetch his own food, his own meat and biscuits. Yeah, boy. Means he'll probably turn out to run rabbits and kill sheep and chickens just to feed himself. A biscuit eater's a no-count dog, all right. But, Mr. McNeil, this little old pup don't look like a biscuit eater. Well, I'll tell you one thing, Text. Yes, sir? This one won't be trained in my kennels. Well, well what you gonna do with him, Papa? I have to take him away, son. But, but why? This is little pup's a no-account. Why, he'd be giving me nothing but trouble if I let him grow up. You mean... You're going to kill him? Now, don't look at it that way, son. You shouldn't do it. But, son... I, I... was a run. I got freckles. Why don't you drown me? Now, Lonnie, don't talk that way. Well... well there's a batten in most every litter. This is just a no-good pup. 
But tain't his fault, Mr. McNeil. Papa, I don't want nothing to happen to him. I don't either. Couldn't we have him, Mr. McNeil, if you don't want him? No, boys, I... Please, Papa. But, son... Don't do nothing to him, Papa. We'd like to have him. Now, Lonnie, I can't have him around my other dogs here in the kennels. We could keep him at my cabin. My folks wouldn't mind. Sure, sure, we could do that, Papa. Well... We could train him to be our own special bird dog. Couldn't we, Ted? You bet. Well, all right, boys, you can have him. Gee, Gee thanks, Papa. Pretty. But someday you'll be sorry, I'm afraid, when he starts chasing chickens and rabbits and maybe killing sheep. Just remember, Sonny, this little run is just a no-good biscuit eater. We got us a dog, Lon, a real show enough dog. Uh-huh, and it's all our own, too. Ain't he a beaut? Sure is. Come here, little old puppy. Come here, boy. Look at them big old eyes and them big old feet and that big old short tail. Uh-huh. Bet he can point birds from here to yonder. Bet if he tries, he can point partridge on my breath. Well, he's a fine dog, all right. I hope your Aunt Cherry don't mind us keeping him here at your cabin. No, she don't mind. You call him, Tex. See if he comes to you. Here, pup. Here, pup. Here, puppy dog. <laughs> Uh, looky here, Lon. He comes right over. Sure. I just know he's going to be a fine bird dog when he grows up. Well, I hope so. <laughs> Say, what? We ain't got a name for our dog. Gee, no. Oh, we got to have a name. What do we call him? Uh, how about Moreover? Moreover? Uh-huh. What kind of name is that? It's a Bible name. It is? Well, sure enough. It's in the Bible. Whereabouts? I don't know exactly, but I heard the preacher say so. He said, Moreover the dog followed Noah. He did? Moreover the dog. That's right. Well, if Moreover's good enough for the Bible, I reckon it's good enough for us. That's what we'll call him. Howdy, little pup. Your name's Moreover. Yes, the Moreover. What do you think of that? <laughs> See there, Long? <laughs> uh huh. He likes the Bible name, don't you, Moreover? <laughs> when are we going to start training him, Lone? Well, the sooner a better, I reckon. We're going to train him like your pappy trains his dog? Sure. Near as I can remember how my papa does it. Mr. McNeil sure makes champion bird dogs. Kind of wish he'd train our little pup. Huh? He wouldn't. You heard him say he's a, a biscuit eater. <laughs> Hush up, little old pup. Besides, my papa's too busy training Silver Bell. Mr. Ames' dog? Uh-huh. I just hope our little old pup turns out to hunt like Silver Bell. Well, she's already won four ribbons at the county field trials. Golly! Bet Mr. Ames is a he pleased with her. A real champion. He's up at our place now. Mr. Ames? Uh-huh. Comes down once a month to talk to my papa and see all his dogs. Guess we wouldn't do so good if it wasn't for Mr. Ames. What you mean, Lone? Well, he pays my papa for raising his hunting dogs and... And his champion dogs for the field trials. Because Mr. Ames likes to have pure D first class bird dogs. I'm glad he ain't got more of them. Huh? <laughs> Mr. Ames wouldn't have no truck with our little old puppy dog. Why not? Well, on account of my papa says we got a, a biscuit eater. Say, Long. Huh? Look at more of it. He acts just like, like he knew what a biscuit eater is. Golly. Well, he sure does. Reckon he really knows what a biscuit... Hush it. Don't say it. Huh? Oh, no. We mustn't, must we? Remember what that name means? Yeah. We got us a real intelligent dog here, Tex. We got to be careful. Never to call him a... a You-know-what. Golly, yeah. You just cheer up, little old puppy dog. (laughs) We ain't never, never going to call you that name again. Here, girl. Come here, Silver Bell. Easy now. That's the girl. Here she is, Miss Ames. Hello there, Silver Bell. <laughs> nice girl. Oh, she's a fine dog, McNeil. Yes, sir. <laughs> Looking better every time I see her. Aren't you, old man? You bet. <laughs> All right. Run along now, Silver Bell. Back to your camp. <laughs> oh, she's a fine dog. 
I think we've got every reason to be proud of her, McNeil. You've done a good job. Thank you, Mr. Ames. You're giving up plenty of training? The field every day? Every minute I can spare. Good. Of course, the county field trials are a long way off, but this year, I want to make certain that Silver Bell wins the ribbon, McNeil. I think I know why. You've guessed it. One more blue ribbon here, and then the national trials at Grand Junction, Tennessee. That's a big meeting up there. Lots of fine bird dogs. But I think Silver Bell's appointed to give them a run for their money. You do, huh? Yep. Well, your word is good enough for me. You've done a fine job of raising my dogs, McNeil. And as long as they keep on winning all the meets and field trials, I won't ever complain. <laughs> <laughs> all right, sir. But, uh, seriously, McNeil. Yes, sir? You've got a big job on your hands raising and training all these dogs. And you've been doing it all yourself as long as I've known you. You're not getting any younger, McNeil. What do you mean? Well, don't you think you ought to get some assistance? Hire some men to help you handle the dogs? Well, I have thought about it. But I love these dogs, Miss Ames. I understand them. I'd kind of be afraid for just anybody to take care oh, of them. Oh, of course. I, I know how you must feel about them. And besides, with the war and all, I don't know where I'd find anybody to help me. Well, what about your son, Lonnie? And that little text fella? Couldn't they do a man's work? Those boys? No, I'm afraid not. Maybe someday, but not soon. They got an awful lot to learn. <laughs> Hey, you, mow over. Mow over? Come here, boy. How you expect to be a high-rating dog making all that noise? Mow over. Come here. You just gotta be quiet when you're hunting birds. Them quails are gonna fly away if you make a lot of noise. They sure is. Now, let's try it again, mow over. Go get him, dog. Go get him. Tex, look at him go through the grass. Uh -huh, he moves fast, and he ain't making a sound. No. He's a natural-born bird dog, Ron. Natural bone. Yes. And he ain't no biscuit eater. Well, boys, still trying to train that dog. Yes, sir, Mr. McNeil. We're going to use a shotgun over him tomorrow. Well, that's so? And sure, he landed his third gun. Well, you boys be careful. I don't care if you kill a dog, but don't hurt yourselves. like this for a long time. Uh-huh. Just about six months, I guess. Golly, he sure has grown up. And he sure has turned out a plum, super fun, high-rating dog. Oh, hello, son. Not working your dog today? He's out with Tex. Oh. Uh, I wanted to ask you, Papa, about the papers on Moreover. Papers? What about him? Well, I... That is, me and Tex, we want to register him. Register? Yes, sir. Uh, we'd like to have his papers if you got them. Oh, I reckon they're around here someplace. But, well, I don't see what good they'll do you. Only time you might need them was if you was going to enter a field trial. <laughs> well, were you thinking of running that dog in a trial at the county seat next month, huh? <laughs> well, <laughs> yes, sir. That, that's just what I aim to do. What? I want to run more over in the county trials next month. But, but you ain't serious, son. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> but Lonnie... It stands a good chance to win as any other dog up there. All right, all right. But it costs money to enter a dog up at the county seat. Where'd you figure to get the entry fee? Well, I hadn't thought about that. Son, you haven't got a chance at the trial. Why, that, that dog of yours is just a biscuit eater. He ain't either. Why, he don't even like to be called a biscuit eater. Me and Tex ought to know. He ain't a biscuit eater. That still remains to be seen, Lonnie. Well, well, anyway, me and Tex want to run him in the county trials. We want to give him a chance. You mean it, don't you? Okay, son, I'll tell you what I'll do. Yes, sir? 
I'll give you and Tex a job. Painting all my kennel houses. You can earn your entry fee. Jim and Nettie. Is it a go? Yes, sir, Bob. I'll stick your dog to the entry fee if you want to throw your money away. But don't say I didn't warn you of one thing. What do you mean, Papa? The silver bells entered in that field trial. <laughs> Well, McNeil, how's our champion? Ready for the big show? All set, Miss Ames. I saw you drive in a while ago. Quite a load on your truck. <laughs> well, yes, sir. Two boys and two uh, dogs. Brought Lonnie and Tex with me. Uh, two dogs? Yeah, the boys have got a pup they're entering in the truck. Oh! <laughs> a little competition for Silver Bell, huh? <laughs> well, not hardly. Uh, uh, how does the field look, Miss there's not a thing to worry about, McNeil. I've already looked over most of the entries, and our Silver Bell is in a class by herself. She can't be beaten. What? How is he, Tex? How's our little old dog? Just wait, Lon. I've been brushing him down. Gee, more of a look at my five. What'd you find out from the judges? Oh, it looks easy, Tex. You do? When our turn comes... We get two chances to point a covey of quail out in the field yonder. Uh-huh. And the judges watch the dog and me, and when moreover's made a point, they give us a regular mark for how good he is. Golly, hope we get enough marks to win. Only one thing worries me, Tex. Why? Well, the judges paired up all the entries, so two dogs run the field at the same time. And our dog's going to work the field with Silver Bell. Silver Bell? Uh-huh. We're the last two dogs on the meet. Well, what's wrong with that? Well, don't you see, Tex? Silver Bell is Mr. Ainge's dog that my pop has raised and trained. And if, if moreover was to beat out Silver Bell, well, Mr. Ainge is liable to get riled up and, and my papa might lose his job. Golly, I never thought of that. Well, I want moreover to win, but I wouldn't want that to happen. Your pappy talk about it to you? No. Reckon he don't think we got a chance to win. I sure wish we could win. So do I, Tex. Hey, here they come, both of them. Huh? Must have come from the judges' booth. <laughs> well, well, well. Hello, boys. Howdy, Mr. Ames. Well, Mr. McNeil. You busy, son? Yes, sir. <laughs> well, well, hi, boy. So this is the other entry from the McNeil kennels, huh? Yes, Mr. Ames. Name's Morva. <laughs> He's a national born bird dog. Oh, is that so? I understand your dog is running against my silver bell in the last contest of the meet. Yes, sir. I hope your dog don't show up silver bell too bad in the finals, eh, Mr. Ames? <laughs> <laughs> Say, we'd better get back to our kennel, <laughs> McNeil. The field trials are about to start. Yes, sir. Goodbye, boys. And good luck. Thank you, sir. Oh, we'll meet at the truck, boys, when it's all over. Yes, yeah, sir, Mr. McNeil. Yes, Papa. <laughs> Wait a minute, Mr. McNeil. Huh? Uh, that dog back there. What about it? Did you take a good look at that dog? Well, I... Well, he's mighty well built. His legs, and the muscles, and, and the way he holds his tail. Oh, he may look like a champion, Mr. Ames. That dog's no good. You don't think he's a threat, huh? That dog? Not a chance. Silver Bell couldn't lose against a hound like that. Yeah. Dog that ain't been brought up right or trained proper. Mm -hmm. You take my word for it, Mr. Ames. That Moro was just a biscuit eater. As before, the two competing dogs will be judged on performance. The way they range the field and locate birds, and the way they hold a point. I might uh, mention that the marks of the dogs competing so far have fallen way below the record set last year by Silver Bell. And now, the last two dogs. Final event. The well-known and famous champion pointer, owned by Mr. Jefferson Ames, Silver Bell. <laughs> and the uh, second dog name of, uh, um, 
moreover. Handlers and the dogs will now take places on the field. All right, everybody, come on. Get up here and see what's happening now. Come up close here. Come on. Well, Monty, won't be long now. No, sir. <laughs> Pretty boy. You think your dog can beat my champion silver bell? Yes, sir. I know he can. <laughs> well, good luck anyway, son. Uh, you man ready? Yes, sir. All set. All right, then. Try to move. Go get him, Wilma. Go, go, go get him. Go, go, go. Hey, will you look at that new dog go? Keen dog, all right. What's his name? Mova. Moving fast. He sure means business. At the rate he's going, it won't take him long to arrange the whole field. Hey. Bye. Bye. That moreover is a real dog, Mr. Ames. Running circles around your silver bell. Yes, I I never saw anything like it. Ah, knows his stuff. Already got one perfect point marked up, and your dog's still ranging the field. Moreover, I thought that dog was a champion. Huh? What'd you say, Mr. Ames? Uh, nothing, nothing. Say, hey, look, a new point. Oh. That moreover's got another point. And a perfect point, too. Yes, this will win the meet if Ronnie can make him hold it. That dog's froze up like a statue. Oh. Never seen nothing like it in my life. Why, that's perfect. That dog's no biscuit eater. Hey, hey, hey now, there's a boy. Hey, hey, boy. What? The boy's moving up behind his dog. Well, he shouldn't do that. He's liable to make the dog break his point. If that dog breaks now, he'll lose the meat. Lonnie, come back, Lonnie. Lonnie. Getting closer and closer. What in Sam Hill's the boy doing? Why, he's talking. Huh? He's talking to his dog. I've never heard of that. What for? What's he saying? What's he saying? Steady now, boy. Steady. Moreover, I wish you could win this meet. And right now, if you just hold still another minute, I reckon you could be champion. A real champion. I can't let you win, moreover. Much as it hurts me way down inside. Because if Mr. Ames' dog don't win, my papa loses his job. Try to understand, little old dog. I'm going to make you break your point. I don't want to do it, moreover, but I have to. Break that point, moreover. You hear me? Break your point. Let the birds go, moreover. Break it. Break that point, you... You biscuit eater. <laughs> What happened? He, he broke his point, that's all, Papa. But why, son? Moreover, would have won the meat line. Why did he break his point? I reckon... I reckon he just ain't good enough to be a... a champion. Well, Miss Ames, Silver Bell won again. Yes. But there's something about all this that I don't understand. Well, the main thing is that we won, ain't it? No. No, McNeil, that's not the main thing. Huh? I may drive down to your place tonight. Tonight? And I'd like to see Lonnie when I get there. Right now, I'm going to have a talk with the judges about that first prize ribbon. <laughs> Papa? What's the matter, son? Nothing. We haven't said a word in two hours. Ever since we got home. No, sir. I wish you'd talk to me, son. Tell me what's wrong. Maybe I could. Oh. Somebody at the door. I'll open it. Might be Mr. Ames. Said he was driving down tonight. Oh, and my little old dog. Oh, and I couldn't keep him down to my cabin. He just kept carrying and carrying on. He's happy now, ain't you, Moreover? Well, Tex. Howdy, Mr. McNeil. Still loyal to that dog after the trick he pulled on you today, huh? I couldn't hold him. He just had to see long. Yeah. He misses me, Papa. He don't want to stay down in the cabin. Yeah, nevertheless, he'll have to. I reckon that's Mr. Ames. I'll let him in. He's sure a fine dog, Lawn. <laughs> Moreover... I won't ever hurt you again. Well, hello, Miss Jane. Come in. Hello, McNeil. 
Ah, Lonnie's still up. Good. Hello, Lonnie. Tex? Evening, Mr. Ames. Boys, have your dog with you, huh? Yes, yeah, sir. Well, that's good. Because I want to talk about this dog. Huh? Well, what do you mean, Mr. Ames? What's the matter? Seems to be a lot the matter, McNeil. First of all, you were wrong about this dog. You don't know as much about dogs as I thought you did. Huh? But that's partly my fault, maybe. We were both too proud of Silver Bell and not proud enough of this dog. What are you getting at, Mr. Ames? Moreover, <coughs> your boy. <laughs> Take a good look at this dog, McNeil. Well? You're looking at a champion. Champ? A champion? A champion? I had a little talk with the judges, boys, after you left this afternoon. They gave me something that rightfully belongs to you and your dog. Here. Well, are the dog gone? The first prize. That's right, boys. But look at here, moreover. The first prize blue ribbon. <laughs> what is all this, Miss Ames? Well, moreover happened to win the county trials today. But but Silver Bell. I uh... withdrew Silver Bell. Had her disqualified. You what? But but why? Why? I'll tell you why, McNeil, because your son here is too much of a man to ever tell you himself. Lonnie? What happened? Lonnie threw the championship this afternoon so that Silver Bell could win. You see. Somehow he had the mistaken idea that the field trial meant more to you and me than it should to a couple of sportsmen. Is... is this true, son? Yes, Papa. I don't say I didn't hate losing that meat today. I thought Silver Bell was the greatest bird dog of all time. But it took a young man, a lot braver than I, to prove that I was wrong. And I, uh, I reckon I was wrong, too. From now on... Moreover's going to stay here where he belongs. Gee, Minetti. Hey, Papa, that'll be fine. And uh, one thing more, McNeil. Yes, Miss Ames? About the help situation. You think you might be needing some good, experienced dog handlers? Well, I uh, I reckon I could use a couple. Uh-huh. Two, maybe? Yeah, but uh, good men ain't easy to find these days. No. But I happen to know of two men who just filled the bill. Who, Mr. Ames? Well, uh, the two men that I had in mind are right here in this room. That's a funny thing, Mr. Ames. I was thinking of the same two fellas. Uh, you reckon they'd be interested? Golly, yes, sir. I'll say. How about it, moreover? <laughs> Adventure Ahead has presented The Biscuit Eater by James Street in a radio dramatization written by Tom Goutte. In today's play, the part of Lonnie McNeil was played by Georgie Ward. Others in the cast were Jim Bowles, Jackie Ayers, James Van Dyke, Kermit Murdoch, Martin Begley, Louis John, and Brad Barker. The music was composed by Leo Kampinski, and the orchestra was directed by Henri Nosko. The entire production was under the direction of Joseph Mansfield.